Good morning, everybody. Today is October 31st, Tuesday. It's Halloween. I don't know if y'all partake in that shit, but I had to dress up today like Ness from the Mario Kart franchise. Kind of stupid, kind of okay. You'll probably see the picture online. I look real dumb. I'm wearing a turtleneck. I got some beautiful guests with me here today, but before I get into that, I'm going to talk about a couple sponsors that I need you to know about. Hartford Denim Company, a.k.a. Hardenco, is a manufacturer of the strongest clothes available. We at Hardenco stand by that statement by backing all of our products with free repairs for the life, life of the garment. Made using only the highest quality materials, everything we produce is cut and sewn in our shop at Harvard, Connecticut. We also specialize in the production of commercial aprons for, but not limited to, the restaurant, bar, and woodworking industries. Please see www.hardenco.com for more information. That's H-A-R Hartford, D-E-N, Denim, C-O Company, 236 Hamilton Street. Mention Ben Breaks Bread or Breaking Bread with Ben Grimm. When you go in, and they'll give you 10%. Tell them you heard it here. And you can get yourself a nice pair of jeans. I got this dope shirt. It was made out of denim a couple weeks back. I've been wearing it a lot. Got to gotta work that motherfucker in. This episode of the podcast brought to you by D. McKellie's Barbershop and Emporium, located at 6 Kirby Road in Cromwell, Connecticut, exit 90, uh, 21 off of I-91. D. McKellie's uh, specializes in all types of men's haircuts and hot shaves. Services are available by appointment only, which can be made conveniently on line at dmichelesbarbershop.com that's d-i-m-i-c-h-e-l-e-s barbershop.com or by calling 860-502-3540 gift cards are, are available in any denomination and they also offer my personal favorite their own water soluble pomade so go get a fresh cut a clean shave and some awesome product and tell them ben sent you dmichelles barbershop and Re- emporium responsible barbering I already told you what Responsible Barbering was about. Never able to find a pet collar that fits your pet's personality? k Collars has you covered. k Collars uh, Pet Collar and Leash Company handcrafts unique pet apparel for your one-of-a-kind pet. k Collars carries a wide variety of designs, including Day of the Dead, American traditional tattoo style, horror, and Asian-inspired, k Collars also carries official designs from some of your favorite hardcore and punk bands. Sick of it all, Madball, Terror, Indecision, Misfits, and the iconic heavy metal band Judas Priest. Find k Collars online at www.caninuscollars.com. Not your average pet collars and leashes. Use code BREAKINGBREAD, all uppercase, for 10% off your entire order on their website, wwwk Keep your pet looking fresh with a canine us collar. Go get that motherfucking Judas Priest one, dog. And your dog could be like, ah! All up on, all up out there. Story and Soil Coffee Company. We are a multi-roast format specialty coffee shop located in the Frog Hollow neighborhood of Hartford, Connecticut. As much as we love great coffee, we love bringing the community that it brings together even more. Our space, though small, is curated carefully to be both efficient and homey. We want all to feel welcome here. Story and Soil, great coffee, better community. Frog Hollow, 387 Capital Ave, Hartford, Connecticut, 06105. They are open every day from 6 to 8, but they open at 8 a.m. on Saturday. So don't go down there at 6 a.m. on a Saturday because you'll be standing in the fucking in the dark for two hours with no coffee, pissed off. Probably have to walk over to Dunkin' Donuts, and guess what? If you do that, you deserve it because you heard it here the fucking hours. Thank you. The Tiny Acre Farm is a micro farm tucked away in the quiet corner of Woodstock, Connecticut, specializing in microgreens, salad greens, edible blooms, and cut flowers for restaurants and specialty markets. We are a rural farm practicing urban farming techniques to bring the highest quality hand-tended produce to some of the best restaurants in Connecticut and Massachusetts. We work with dozens of restaurants, cafes, and retailers across Boston, Worcester, Eastern and Central Connecticut. We're just two farmers and one crazy farm dog trying to give the chefs what they want and make rad local produce more accessible to people who love food as much as we do. Some of the greatest local digs you can find our, our produce at include the Cook and the Bear, Story and Soil Coffee Company, Goldburgers, Firebox, Division West, It's Only Natural, and Osa. 
If you're a chef or a local retailer interest, interested in using a carry uh, or carrying Tiny Acre produce, contact Matt via email at tinyacresbigoak at gmail or hit us up on social media, Tiny Acre Farm on uh, Instagram. Mention this ad for 10% off your first order. If you motherfuckers want some radish greens, you know what to tell them. They do a lot more than, uh, you know, just greens and salad mixes and stuff. They have, uh, what do you call it, like a bath line. They have this um, little lip balm. Meg really likes that. They got some uh, salt scrub. And I'll tell you what, I was never into salves. Didn't never did anything for me. But they gave me some sleep salve, and I put that shit on my temples. Fucking, I slept the night without waking up when I usually wake up a lot. So check them out, Tiny Acre Farm on Instagram. So today is a podcast with two good buds of mine, Tim Murado and Matt Crow from the Goldbergers Empire. And they are opening a new restaurant that they would like to let you know about. It's going to be in Newington right next to the original Goldbergers. It's going to be called the Five and Dime. It's going to be breakfast. It's going to be all kinds of shit. It's going to be good that's what the fuck I'm telling you right now. It's going to be good. And you need to check it out when it opens within the next couple weeks. Mm, probably a month. Maybe in two weeks. I don't know. It all depends on who does what where. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Tim and Matt. I'll break bread. 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 We did it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait, you guys aren't ladies and gentlemen. You're just two gentlemen. <laughs> well, thanks. You gotta have one of each. And in time. today's world, you can't really talk about your gender, yep. bro. Yeah. I'll be the lady for tonight. You Okay, okay <laughs> fuck it. Cool. I'm, un- I'm undecided. <laughs> oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have Tim and Matt of the Burger Empire Gold Burgers, both locations, Capital Ave. In Newington. I almost said New Britain. That would have been a real fuck up. Imagine there's just people driving around New Britain like, where the fuck is the Goldberg? (laughs) (laughs) Right to Yelp. (laughs) (laughs) He's an asshole. Yeah, man. Fucking. So uh, what's going on, you guys? We're just we're just tying up loose ends, trying to get this place open. So uh, for anybody that doesn't know, you guys are opening a new restaurant. Yep. And it's adjacent to the Goldbergers in Newington. It's Goldbergers is a standalone building on Main Street in Newington, and uh, it's the oldest building on the block. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's been quite the undertaking and a lot of fun and a lot of learning going on. But um, the opportunity to open up two businesses side by side has always been sort of a goal since we've been thinking about expand expansion Mm -hmm. in some way so there's a story behind how that place opened opened up for for uh vacancy but uh we snatched it up as soon as it happened you know well was there anybody looking at it other than you guys Uh, well when we we were looking to expand and we were looking to uh you know we actually dabbled in the whole gastro pub concept Uh uh-huh in another market uh in another plaza in Newington. Mm -hmm. And all the while, we had already inquired about the spot right next door to us. Okay. Which was a lawyer, a lawyer's office. That's what I thought it was. Or like, for some reason, I thought it was like a... I thought it was a Century 21, too, at one point. It could have been. It's all the same thing. could have been. (laughs) It wasn't food, so I don't give a fuck. A lot of dead... There's a lot of cigarette smoke coming out of it all the time. (laughs) A lot of dead space. Yeah. 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 Why not? Fucking taste. Snatch it up. What was that? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> so as the story goes, when we uh, got into looking into the uh, the the opportunity to ap- open up this gastro pub and said some plaza in Newington, mm-hmm. um, we had inquired about the spot right next door because that was a one, and we found out he had uh, the gentleman there had five years left on his lease, so. 
it was a good long-term goal, five-year goal, you know, maybe get this place up and going and then maybe expand out Goldberger's at that point or something else with a different concept, mm-hmm. just get that whole bottom floor. So we set our sights on it and we did our due diligence. We went through the town. We, we got some zoning done. We were working with a lawyer for the whole alcohol licensing mm-hmm. type stuff. And we spent a little bit of money and, uh, Things weren't going the way we hoped they were, and we were obviously taking our time because we were a little bit, uh, we, were, we were hesitant a little bit. But at the same time, we were ready to move. Well, about five, three months or four months into the process, the gentleman next door, the lawyer, found out on a Tuesday he was sick and he was gone by the next week. Oh, no. Yeah. And this was in December of 2015. Okay. So fairly recently. Fair, yeah, real recently. <laughs> dead, <laughs> hence the dead space. <laughs> oh, shit. Rest in peace, my friend. I don't know who you were, but you've made a nice segue into this comedic, you know, <laughs> whatever. It happens. I was. I thought you guys were about to tell me, like, somebody died in the space, and then I was going to be like, dude, lay it on me. Yeah. I've been listening to paranormal shit all week. <laughs> Can we go there with a fucking Polaroid and take some pictures of some fucking orbs? Well, we Fuck. opened up the wall and found nothing but blood. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Imagine the walls were bleeding. <laughs> Danzig was moving in, and then I realized there. it was my eyes. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! That's fucking. So it well, was. It was a circumstance. Yeah, everything happens for a reason, and whatever people say, but it didn't make it. We thought about it for about two days, and then changed directions. Okay. So hmm. it's different space, different set of opportunities, different set of. People involved, Mm -hmm. Um, a lot more of this process fell back onto the shoulders of Tim and myself. We lost a partner in the deal, or a potential partner in the deal, Mm -hmm. because the space just shrunk. You know, it was big, big spot versus little spot, not a lot of room for a little spot for three people. Okay. So we trudged through... uh, The beginning of the year in 2016, changing directions, keeping the same architect firm on on uh, on retainer, just changing directions, building out the space. And uh, we always wanted something smaller. And I think this was more fiscally responsible, responsible for both of our careers and for the further development of Goldbergers in general. Yeah. I mean, literally, we're right next door. You'd be pouring coffee and flipping burgers within a minute of each other. So, is it primarily breakfast? I could see. Or have you not even worked that out yet? Well, I think the customers are going to dictate that. You know. Really? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, yes, we're going to over, overlap hours during lunch. Okay. So, maybe that's a little robbing whoever to pay the other guy. But uh, that breakfast crowd, I mean, Jesus Christ, right across the street. Yeah, you guys do have a whole municipal building right there. And Dunkin' Donuts. And Dunkin' Donuts. No Dunkin' Donuts. Horrible parking lot. No, oh, true. Yeah, so we see people walking in and walking out Almost all day long. People going and I, I, I'll way. be the first to admit, I drink gallons and gallons of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'm not proud of it, but <laughs> the A number one reason is because there's a drive through Okay. And if I, you know, my first stop from my house to point A is a Dunkin' Donuts, whether it's the first one, the second one, or the third one, you're gonna drive it's a drive through. through. Yeah. yeah. Down, they, downtown Newington doesn't have that. No. They have ones now that are only drive through. You seen them yet? That's all they should have. It's shit. Yeah. It's just on the highway. I <laughs> Get it and go. They, you know, to. they have one in Bristol. You know where the old whole donut was on the corner of Farmington Ave and King Street? I know the area. I have to. Yeah, it's there. a total like uh, Dunkin' Donuts like box where there's only a door for the employees Is it to like go the old in. Kodak film. Photo, photo map, map? Booths? Yo, pr- bigger, yeah. It's pretty much the, the same, same idea, yeah. Ask for yeah for some shit. Well, they just dropped their donuts from like eighty five to like fifteen flavors. They just cut like all their flavors, so they're mm-hmm. making big changes. So that means they're, they're probably losing money on like all the shit, shit flavors that nobody likes. All yep. that shit, all that candy flavored shit. Oh, dude, there's like Oreo donuts and shit. And However, they and they don't taste like Oreos. Bring back that motherfucking Krona, and we'll have a talk because <laughs> that shit was fucking good, dude. Listen, I, I love donuts of all sorts, man. Yeah, I, I eat their donuts. Well. Yeah, I'll eat a fucking Dunkin'. I'll eat a donut. <laughs> I love fucking apple filled ones, but I also am fucking old school. Me and the girl, the secretary of from where I work 
fucking crullers all day. Plain cruller or jelly cruller? Plain. Uh, yeah. But you got to drink, eat it with your coffee. You Have can't, you been down to Elmwood yet? Which Last one? time I was here, I told you to go to Elmwood Bakery for donuts, and you said you were going to go. Right across the street from me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I went there fucking a couple weeks ago. I've been pretty well for the last few weeks, but like a, probably about a month ago. I Something must have happened. Well, I went to work, and I was like, fuck it. And I was on my way home, and I just surprised Meg with like six fucking donuts. And she was like, we got to eat half of each one. I was like, all right, let's yep. do it. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, man, fucking... Uh, I love a donut. So, are you all right? So, you, it's going to be breakfast. There's that, obviously there's going to be a breakfast of some sort. I think we're going to do a shitload of breakfast. Are you going to dabble in any sort of like best breakfast pastries, or are you oh, going to yeah. bring that shit in, or are you making oh. it yourself? I don't know. Matt's wife's going to be making a lot. I'll be making some. And we're going to be just we're going to do pick a lot of some some like a good amount of fresh baked stuff. Going to get into breads. Yeah. But yeah, I, th- I think our uh, once the it's going to be a simple breakfast though. It's going to be breakfast sandwiches. It's mm-hmm. it's not going to you know it's like a Long Island deli. Like. You, you know, in starting these conversations and going through the process with Tim, it's like I I got to realize he wasn't even there for the beginning of Goldberger's. You know, he came in four years after, and the Goldberger menu was really small. And I think the the same. You follow the same, the arc. Oh, it's going to evolve. It's like, going to evolve. You've got to give it room to evolve. Yeah, and you're going to, like, it's going to be, like, you know, learn as you go kind of deal and, yep. like, learn what people like and then just fucking it'll take off from there. Yep. But you, the important thing is getting what you want to do from the beginning down. Get it, get get those core three, four, five things, whatever, whatever you want to do mm-hmm. and do well, get those things down. And then, and then really, then it's, then it's time to... To go at it. Okay. Yeah. See, like, from a customer standpoint, and somebody that, like, was eating there before I even knew the both of you, I was like, damn. Like, there's, you know, you have your fucking Plan B's, and you have your Max Burgers, and then there was what you guys are doing, and I always gravitated to that, not because I was living so close to there, because there was better, like, ideas, like, you go into, like, a Max Burger, you're going to have all that same cookie-cutter kind of burgers. But, like, you, like I walk in and you guys got some fucking special with some crazy shit on it. To me, as a person that, like, writes about food and loves food, that's what I gravitate to. And then I was totally sold the day one of you motherfuckers fucking uh, torched a creme brulee at the register for me. <laughs> Who was that? Was it you? Probably, Dude, I, it was a few years ago. It's what they call dog and pony, right? Yeah. And I was like, yo, I said, to, I said, I forgot who, who I was with. I was like, yo, they got a fucking creme brulee on the on the on the special menu. And these dudes make burgers. I fuck it, I'm gonna try it. And I think it was you. I, I think it was. You torched up a fucking thing right in front yeah. of me, and you were twisting it, and you put it down, and you go, "Don't touch that for about a minute." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I ripped into it, and I was like, oh, okay. These dudes can do more than that. Well, t- Tim, since Tim's come on, he's really taken it to where, even beyond where I even thought Goldberg's could be, would be from day one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's in businesses, you go through plateaus and climbing, plateaus and climbing. And when, you know, timing is everything. We, Tim was in a time situation. Mm-hmm. He was in a situation. I was in a situation. And the timing worked. And he just took took the reins and and shit that's where we are today where were you did you work in a restaurant before you opened the restaurant with sure. this one? yeah I do work. you want to say <laughs> no i'll say <laughs> okay. yeah i mean i went to culinary school okay. uh, you know later in my life probably like 22 23 years old mm-hmm. went to connecticut culinary institute when i was back on in farmington at, at the exchange the reservoir oh yeah. okay so we were cooking on hot point you know contractor special ovens and just like any other school it's what you take out of it you know so from there i went to work for carmen anthony group for seven years and got burnt out and went to work for the compass group that does corporate dining and catering they do uh they're a big company a really big company and it wasn't for me that's one of the areas in my life when i got in trouble because I thought personally in trouble because like it's the whole six o'clock to two in the afternoon thing Mm -hmm. you know it sounds great on paper but cooks and chefs and people working in the industry 
you know, we're a different type of breed, and you know, you think something's a good idea, and it's your, it's like your your head <laughs> fucking with you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fr- from there, I uh, I uh, I uh, was a sous chef opening up a restaurant, a joint uh, bi- uh, endeavor by two polar opposites that I won't really get into, but uh, wasn't a good fit. Okay. And it was at that point, you know, I was. I all through my career I was on like I, I didn't have the chops. Like I, I'm confident in my cooking, mm-hmm. but like I didn't really have guidance. You know, it was all you underpay someone with not enough experience and throw a whole bunch of responsibility at them. And you're gonna get what you pay for. You're gonna get yeah. Mm-hmm. You're gonna you know, you learn things. Some not things that not the right way to do things. Habits. You learn habits. But you also you learn you learn what not to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Most well, that, of the time. Well, that's how you learn. <laughs> yeah, you know sure. what I mean. Sure, and and coming out of this debauchery of a <laughs> of a partnership of a restaurant I was working for, um, I was fed up. I had a little bit of savings saved up, and I'm like, "F it! I I want to do my own thing. You know, I want to breakfast, lunch, or catering." something not di- like not fine dining mm-hmm. and i didn't at that point i didn't really care about what i was doing i just wanted to do it for myself this is before like food trucks were blowing up and mm-hmm. you know because that's a fairly new thing oh you know, yeah sure that's like sure. Re- like really big like last five years like people had food trucks before that but they were like far and few between like looked at like nah, like, like the lower guy eat on that truck and now everybody wants one and they're spotless and they're immaculate and they're successful too yeah. oh yeah okay well yeah. i think that the whole food the way people think about food people like getting good food in a very comfortable environment mm-hmm. and that's like the epitome of food truck like a good food truck if they could serve awesome food out of that small little space it almost enhances the experience for the person eating that food totally because you totally don't expect that coming out of a truck they or, can do this with only using that yeah then yeah and then they'll do it someplace else tomorrow yeah and my respect is like paid right there yeah. oh it's a hustle it's certainly always a hustle mm-hmm but it's um, it's pretty cool. It sort of like lines up with the whole Goldberger thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting better food than what you expect out of the storefront or the the area. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, now yeah, we we have a, fo- a following of people and people know who we are. But still, people come in every day. And don't never heard of us. Well, yeah, people like driving through. Like maybe yeah. somebody driving through town for work or something. They see the sign. They're like, oh, okay. And then they come in. They're like, whoa. Like that's what happened to me. You know, like, I didn't, I just was like, oh, shit, it's like a place called Gold. I used to live right on Highland Street in uh, Newington, and my roommate at the time was like, we got to go to Goldberger's. And I had drove past the place my whole life, Mm -hmm. well, since you guys had been there, and I'd never really been like, what what is that? And then he forced me to go there, and I was like, dude, I've been fucking (laughs) fucking up. People (laughs) still go in there looking for bagels. Really? (laughs) Oh, Oh, yes. My former partners. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right, now yep. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I do not like bagels that much, but it's a thing that, like, maybe once a year, I'm like, give me a fucking bagel. But like, I'm a, I'm a, like a weirdo with a bagel. It's got to be sweet with a sweet kind of cream cheese. Don't ever give me a fucking egg bagel with some fucking chive cream cheese. <laughs> if I'm going to fucking do it, I'm going to spike my blood sugar in the morning <laughs> with, like, a fucking French toast bagel and, like, walnut. That's Alicia your- goes with a sausage, egg, and cheese on a cinnamon raisin. I'm, t- I'm turning towards that. That is really good. Don, it, like, I, yo, I, was, I had to talk shit at first, obviously, but that's a good fucking. It really is. Like, <laughs> it really is. It's like <laughs> these dudes that are putting like hamburgers on do- like on a on a glazed donut. You ever see? It those? doesn't look good on paper, but once you, you take bite that, it, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that's fucking. Yeah, it's funny. I just didn't like. I didn't know for the longest time, and then I went in, and then you guys every once in a while I'll be like, oh shit, and they got fucking pork, fucking al pastor tacos today. And then I came in another time. I was like, the fucking turkey wing? Yeah. But that was after I had already known. So I knew yeah. shit was cool. And yeah. I fucking would, I was, I would definitely, we, I've definitely come there on a Friday night and had to leave because the, the, the 
the, the line was out the door. Yeah, and I, I was like angry. And I like, don't mind that. I was angry. <laughs> not at all, dude. Not at all. Fuck me. Especially when it's you. Yeah, it's like, all right, then he's going to go. He'll get you somewhere else. <laughs> like, you definitely have, like, done that before. And I, but I'm just like, I was fuck. I was happy because I was like, you, you, I meet people in the food world, and it's just like anybody else. Like I can smell their bullshit from a mile away. I can tell who's flexing and trying to be like hard or like trying to be something they're not. And it was just a fucking like a humble operation from the start yeah. with a fucking great product. And that's like you know, well, that's why people. I like it. It's, yeah, it's the people involved. You know, we. we it's got We've had some incro- incredible people working for us. You know, not everyone's like a five star chef. No, but, but like it's it's stuff you can't train. It's stuff, and we try to, and I think we're good judges of people, where we don't keep people around if we don't believe you're gonna. You know, you start you to got see that, that shit come into your, It comes pretty quick. We yeah, got, we have people that have been with us for years now, and you get you get somebody new that comes in. And they start getting in your ear about your guy that's been with you for three years. And you're like, it's easy to look at somebody and be like, well, you can get the fuck out. Yeah. Like, you I, just, I know, like, I know nobody's perfect in here, but you're not shit to us. And you just and we're started. We're a tight so, crew, yep. and that is not going to sit well with me or it's, anybody because I'm going to tell every one of my cooks that you just said that. It's not a good look. Just so they know. Dude, it happens in my industry too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Interns. Yeah. <laughs> we fucking haze those uh, motherfuckers. Sure. But every once in a while, there's a fucking great one that does a great job and they don't do shit like that and guess what happens? They fucking get offered a they position. It. It's yep. stuff like that. You can't train. You can't do it. You just, the way that person was brought up or what, however they got to that point and that's what... That's what we look for, really. Yeah. Well, you, you know? get a bunch of like like-minded people doing the same thing in a small space like that. That's and if you guys are all about like being like making new shit and like expanding and like like you know moving into other areas, they see shit like that. Whether it's a young kid or like an older person, they're like, oh, I gotta set my game up because like these dudes are on some other shit and they're not just fucking making, you know, tomato lettuce and cheese burgers. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah man. no, it's one of the hardest th- hardest thing for every profession is staffing. Yeah, like because you have to hire somebody to know what they're gonna do. Yeah, it's easy. Every, we you all have to take that chance. Yep, we all know how to judge somebody, but somebody will fill you fill you full of shit for two weeks and they're killing it. They're then you hand them a broom and watch them sweep. Yeah, <laughs> like wow, you can't even fucking sweep. You can't <laughs> clean. Why would if, you might be able to make great food, but you can't do anything after that? Yeah, your area is not clean. Nothing else. Like there's a lot more to. To working in a kitchen than being able to either make a flavor, make a food, make anything. There's mm-hmm. there's twelve other steps if I can go with just before doing any of those things. It, dude, it, it's pretty much like any other kind yeah. of like anybody's job. Yeah, you and you treat you, you treat up. those people that that have given it to you with the utmost respect, really. Mm-hmm. And and you know those people come in and try to drive wedges or try to dime out someone else and mm-hmm. they don't know the situation they're already talking it's like imagine just you know the whole restaurant business whether it's you know freaking michelin star or fucking burger shops cisco <laughs> like down the street from you guys it's all kind of you know it all kind of runs together cisco's good as hell i love it <laughs> i'll go there dude and that lady is so goddamn nice yeah. the green chili pork verde oh <laughs> dude holy shit people and that's another thing people don't really know about that i brought a bunch of people there and they're like i've never even been down this road i used to go when he used to be at uh east west okay I used to go when he did breakfast there east west is good dude East West is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what like what have you guys been eating in the area that's new that you fucking got kind of like taken a liking to? I went out to uh, Oso. Yeah, you went to Oso. Ago. I no. still have to be. I still have to go. Matt, Matt, in, Matt invited me, yeah. so yep. now I'm gonna go. Gotta go. I'm <laughs> telling you, that's. I mean, just just talking to Matt, he's on like a, another level. Oh yeah, of like food. Yeah, food finding. He's food figuring. De- he's definitely like you know a dude that does what he does in the field like yep. he takes everything like he's learned yeah into he's, the field he's like a fucking forager that will bring it into the restaurant and cook it right Making there vinegars yeah. he's got all his vinegars going you look at his pantry you can see oh yeah they got a nice fucking yeah. larder going over there it's fucking crazy um i'm addicted to han i see that it's a great place i can't believe it like it's very strange to me because that restaurant or that building has changed hands more times than anybody wants to admit 
And, dude, they're just fucking the biggest sweethearts over there. I fucking love it. There's this one dude, right? I know his name ain't Phil, but his name tag says Phil. <laughs> and he's fucking so... Every time I go in there, I wait until I see him pop out of the back. I go grab him. And so you go in the back... Like, it's a hot pot setup. Like, yeah. you guys know what that is, but mm-hmm. people listening might not. So, you know, you get your broth and you just, like, cook everything in this soup. But you can make, there's a whole bar area in the back for, like, sauces and all the soy and all the, like, shakeable stuff is there. And the first time I was there, he made me his sauce that he likes. And it's, like, mostly chili oil with all this other shit. I tried to do it one day, fucking fucked it up. So every time I go in there now, God, I yeah. wait, I go up to him, I put my hand on his shoulder. I was like, yo, will you make me my sauce? Make me the good sauce? He's like, oh, yeah. And he does it, and I try to watch what he's doing, and I can never you do want, it. You could you could ask him for the measurements. Yeah, and, and I could not still never that. do it. Yep. And he just fucking, they kill it over there, dude. They're so, and they're so fucking nice. And that's what, like, that. I just love that shit. And it'll it's get just, you to eat your vegetables, that's for sure. Because oh, fuck it's yeah. awesome. And it gets you to try some shit you ain't never tried before. Oh, my God. I might not like it, but I tried it. <laughs> what broth do you go with? Dude, I go, I've, oh, I only went with the old po- old broth? jar, pickle yes. jar once. Uh, that one's good. I love that one. Yeah. But I'm like all the red hot ones, okay. like the Shengdu and the Mala and stuff like that. I want to do that other one that's super hot, but it's white. You've seen that? The clear one I that's hot? I haven't seen the white I, I've seen the... I always get the pickle brain one. Oh, I've been okay. there twice. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I've gotten like... I've probably been there probably like five or six times. Maybe, maybe more, but like... That shit is just so fucking good. I got lotus root. Mm-hmm. Didn't really like it, but I tried it. Meg liked it, but it was one of those things you really had to keep in there for a long time. That's cool. You throw your potato in there, you let it go, and then you eat a couple other things. You come back to the potato in like 10 minutes, and it's perfect. Dude, you literally drop the beef in yeah. 10 seconds, 20 seconds. But like the vegetables, you got to... You gotta let them, you gotta let them yeah. sit. The quail egg, like that shit's pretty much already cooked. You just gotta heat it up. But dude, all that shit. They have like they just put out like so you go through the menu and it's like when you get to the middle fold page and it's all the pictures with the corresponding codes like the A two A three. But in the front part, this last week I went. They had seven new ingredients, and one was called a yam cake. Like <laughs> definitely looked could like be a lot of ways a yam cake could be. Taken. It was very it's weird. Good. It looked like jelly. It was flat and it was oval, and it, I don't know how they what it, why they would call it a yam cake. It wasn't like anything <laughs> like that. It was very weird. It didn't cook. It got hot, but it didn't change. It was very weird. Meg liked it. I did not. And then I got, uh, yo, you ever get their chicken wings? No. I've only done the hot pot. Dude, I went and got the hot pot like three times, and I was like, fuck it. Let's try the regular food. Best scallion pancake I've fucking ever had in my life, and I've gone to China Pan my whole life. Well, I I like Shu. These other I like Shu also. Shu has a good scallion pancake. So I've eaten some of his food. His crisp dead... uh Squirrel fish? Have you ever gotten that from him? No. Shoe? Shoes over Next near... Next to yeah, yeah, in the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah, me and Matt went there. Dude, there's no fucking... That shit was unbelievable. Yeah. There's no shortage of good, like, Asian cuisine no. in this area. It's, yeah. it's, you know, you eat Chinese food, delivery Chinese food all your life. People don't even know you that there's, like, another yeah. level. You don't know that there's real food no. past General Tso's for most of your life. Imagine going to China and just walking around and eating that shit. It's uh. going to change your whole perspective, Yep. which I would like to do one day. But I'm a convicted well, felon. Well, shit, when you go to see your... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the process. <laughs> when you go see your brother out, and he's out in San Francisco, right? Oh, dude, it's insane. I used to... When I used to work in San Fran, I'd go... I'd get off the BART in the Tenderloin and walk through all, you know, every Asian town, basically, to get up to uh, where I worked. And I didn't, I didn't know much then. I had zero dollars in my pocket. But you walk around there long enough, you eat. You'll and find you get the full, deals. And you, yeah, and you talk. You just kind of talk to people. Most of the time, you don't understand each other at all. But you're talking about food and pointing at food, and people, you know, you know what you're talking about by the end of the conversation. You ever go to House of Nanking? I had z- out there. Yeah, I had no money. I had zero. <laughs> I was. This like, is I, just like it's. It, I want to say it's it's Chinese food, mm-hmm. and I believe it's on the outskirts of the Tenderloin. I'm not really sure. It might be on Scott. I'm not really sure. Like I have, I I go there a couple times a year, but I haven't been to that spot in a couple years. But like I'm a meat eater, and this shit is the best tofu that I've ever had in my life, and it's just like. 
they sell t-shirts like i had a rainbow <laughs> shirt house of man king i wore it for years <laughs> like that shit is so fucking good but yeah they, and that's like another city like you go there shit's gone and new shit is there you know, every, and like yeah. the mainstays are still around. Like, like from sh- yesterday to today. Boom. Like every day. You could literally go there and eat something different every day yep. for the rest of your life. Yep. And you could eat, like, you could even just go to the, the Embarcadero, into the ferry building, and eat the best cheeses, the best breads, the best oils. All that's how I ate. There yeah. and, and the, no money. In the, so embarca- in the Embarcadero shit. on the pier, yep. there is a tapas restaurant called Coqueta. You ever eat there? I might have. I don't know. I was out there. You eat Spanish tapas in, around here, and you're like, oh, shit, this is good. Uh, you, I went there, and I was like, this is like, dog, I'm talking prawns. Like, <laughs> put up on the plate, like, holding each other, and I'm just like, whoa. And and even my brother was like, yo, that's not even, like, that's not even, like, good. Like, there's other shit. Just and wait. Like, yeah. yeah, and I was just like, damn, I fucking love that place. Yeah, it's a- But, yeah, my, my new favorite around here is, is the Han restaurant. Oh, we got to go there, so. And I've made friends yeah, with them via the internet. I don't know who runs it but like i repost their pictures and they'll always message me like thank you and i'm just like okay i want to have a party because they have the eight seater in the back i've sat at that we actually had someone's birthday there well my wife's mom's birthday and a bunch of french speaking canadians and me like talking about language barrier i can't even understand what they're talking about now never in long (laughs) you're just alone (laughs) i'm like we just want everything no dude every time i like the every time i go there i eat everything but i don't know what happened this last time i think the broth i got was just a little too much for me a little too spicy mm-hmm. and you know when you just feel like a gluttonous american <laughs> anytime i eat judging me dude anytime i eat indian, going out to dinner <laughs> dude anytime i eat indian or any type of asian food if I leave food on the table, I feel bad because that's like because they're judging. That's in their country is like a diss. You know what I mean? To fucking you, you're you're some fucking piece of shit, like American. Like we gave you this fucking yeah. food. You don't like it or son? So like me and Meg are like. Yo, powering through like we're sweating. We're like we can't leave. Just put in your cheeks. Throw up outside. We, we can't leave, leave anything. We don't need to eat tomorrow, dude. It was so fucking good. It was so good. But I went there on like a, fr- a Saturday night, and it's literally every table's full. So like sometimes I'll no. go like Saturday or Sunday in the day. Okay. And there, it's fucking. It's awesome. It's fucking great. I felt bad. Uh, the not the last time we went, but the time I went before. The dude is like. He speaks very good English, but he's got, like, a little bit of, like, a barrier. And he comes up to me at the end of the dinner and he goes, you want fried ice cream? And I was, like, dieting. Yeah. I was only eating the meat and shit. And I go, no, buddy, I'm good. And he kind of, like, looked at me, like, You're like, all right, diet's off. I'll take two. He was asking me if I wanted free ice cream. <sighs> and when we left, he was all sad. And Meg was like, fuck. I go, what? She goes, I feel so bad. I think he was I'm gonna give you free ice cream and we said no and I was like fuck like the next time I go in I have to explain to him that I didn't understand what yep. he was saying and I was yeah. like no I, I don't need any fried ice cream nah tonight. man I don't need your free shit <laughs> I, I felt so bad I felt so bad but yeah those people over there are fucking awesome have uh, uh what else is new it's fuss season right now it's yeah. getting into it yeah and getting back to your like sometimes you make the broth too spicy Coming out of the summer season, I made my first ball and I totally effed it up. I'm like, I forgot. I got to find the find the seasoning again. Yeah. And then it's, where do you like? Dude, um, I'll tell you, for years, I was um, impartial to faux Boston. Mm-hmm. Impartial. Didn't want to go anywhere else. Um, every once in a while, I'd be like out of state and I'd go to somewhere that somebody told me. But for like the neighborhood shit around here. But I'll tell you what, man, the minute I fucking ate that darkness at the Tiger Belly, that changed my whole, like... I've, yet, I've yet to be there, but, I, you know, I've seen him. That I, dude, yeah. that dude has got some... I wanted to get him on the podcast, and uh, I contacted him, and the day I contacted him, he, he said he was going to China for, like, food study shit for, like, three months. And I was like, hit me a bat, hit, hit me up when you come back, because we're going to talk fucking round, right? <laughs> yeah. And he kills, like, they do sushi there. They have a pho bowl. They have a ramen bowl, and then they do like all the like like uh, pork buns and chicken buns, mm-hmm. and they're just as fucking good as any place I've ever fucking. Is this eaten. place in Manchester? No, well, Granby, Granby, yeah, right. yep. Tiger Belly. Yep, dude, we should not. we should hit 
hot pot for lunch and tiger belly for dinner. I'm telling you, go in like the summer. Yep. Hit that up and then go right like a mile down the road and go to um the ice cream place. Yes. Yeah. Best ice cream that I've ever had in my life. I, I always Street. wanted to call it Green Acres, but it's called something else. Oh, it's called um. It's right on the corner of that yeah. four-way intersection with the fucking monument. I yeah. always want to call it Green Acres or Green Pastures, and it's nothing like that. Oh. What the fuck is it called? But whatever. I'm horrible with names. Granby Ice Cream Place, <laughs> if you're listening, you have the best. I, I told the lady. Yeah. I, I walked in. I go, are you the owner? She was like, there's a bunch of young girls there, and there's like this woman overseeing. And I was like, uh, I was like, do you own this place? She's like, yeah. And I was like, I don't mean to like blow smoke up your ass, but like you have the best ice cream and the best ice cream selection that I've ever had in my life. Like I, went, I think Carmen got like a lavender lemon ice cream that was yeah. phenomenal. Dude, you go there awesome. and there's at least six flavors on that shit that you've never heard of, and they change it out all the time. Mm-hmm. Are they just a seasonal place? Or are they open year round? They're probably not open in the in the winter. In the winter, not yeah. If you, not if you see the crowd of people that that's out there from June to September. Yeah. The thing is, though, they might have people coming in there in, the, sure in the winter. Uh, it's not a hut like you walk inside. You know, it's, Store. it's a, yeah, it's a storefront. But uh, the first time I went, grassroots. There you go. Grassroots. First time I went, I love like I'm a fat fuck. So now I like to if I want to eat just the ice cream and taste it, I'll get the I'll get myself like a cup or a bowl. Mm-hmm. But I'm always waffle cone dude. Three different <laughs> flavors, right? <laughs> so the first time I go there, I get the dude. They got a fucking blackberry goat cheese. And I got something that also corresponded with that. That wouldn't be gross if I mixed mm-hmm. it, like another mm-hmm. berry. Yeah, dude, I dude, it's fucking coming off the top of it. It's so much ice cream, I kill it. And I'm just like standing there, and Meg's like not even like a quarter way through hers, <laughs> and I go. Don't fucking judge me. I'm going to get another one. She goes, you're going to have two fucking waffle cones right now. I was like, don't judge me. I'll wake up early tomorrow. I'll fucking run or I'll, I'll do like deadlifts or something. I just take a shit. I take a huge shit. So I go back in and I get the, they got a um, black and white malted milkshake ice cream and it's gray. That shit was probably the best ice cream I've ever had in my whole life. It was very weird. It was so good. But, yo, they have, like, all the hot ice creams, the fucking chili ones, and, like, fucking grape nut. And, like, they got everything. I fight, dude, I could definitely look on Instagram right now. And, like, they have some shit that you've never had. I want some ice cream right now. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Ice creams from Kristen at Millwrights. She is my favorite. Her ice creams are ridiculous. Ridiculous. I tell her, man. I tell. I've told her to her face. I've tell her. I told her through social media. You're my favorite pastry chef ever. Oh yeah. You're my favorite pastry chef, and yep. I'm not just saying that because you're one of the only ones I know, or that you're mm-hmm. like close and accessible, and like. Uh, but even the way that like conduct- Niles talks about her and like who she is in the kitchen, like she's just like that person. Like- that girl has a goddamn gift. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna hit her up. I'm gonna have her on here. I there you go, dude. I've had one female on. I had another one lined up. This girl, she like blew me off at the last minute and wanted to come back, but I was just like, "You like you gave me less than twenty four hours notice. You're not coming back." Yeah. That's unprofessional. <laughs> That's it. That's but, it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna ask her to come on because fucking she is the shit. It's like stuff you don't want to eat when it's in front of you. Kind of like I really want to eat this, but it's amazing. Mm-hmm. To I want to like at. spray fucking like acrylic over <laughs> it and put it <laughs> on my fuck goddamn home. fucking <laughs> put it on my mantle. Dude, her shit is so fucking good. Yeah. I um <clears throat> so you know what? Let's let everybody know. You guys have a um a, a location on Capitol Ave in Hartford. Yep. In the Frog Hollow neighborhood. On your block you're shared with some other local businesses. But you did acquire your restaurant there from another restaurant that, like, you know, wanted to get rid of their spot. Yeah. So when you guys did that, did you know you were going to do that? Like, no. That just fell on your lap, right? I had a, I kind of. I had a, getting a hernia operation. Really? When it got all talked about. It was, went, oh! <laughs> yeah. As soon as we started talking about it, my belly button blew out. <laughs> no, we were, we, we did a pop-up. Over at um, at the spot, and I called to see how everything went. We were going to pick up money from the night, and it kind of got put to us. Like, look, I really like what's going on right now. 
maybe you guys come in take the spot over and we talked about it i was like i can't do shit for four to six weeks i'm in i'm getting an operation in like three days Mm -hmm. so we kind of like talked about it the whole time and then i got operation four weeks later went in moved all the equipment scrubbed the kitchen out on a sunday they they had their last service on a saturday Mm -hmm. scrubbed the kitchen on a sunday monday we brought we had the hood cleaned, brought the grill in, brought in all the necessary food, and opened Monday night. Yeah, I think from the times we shook hands to the time we were open was two weeks. <laughs> I think they were serving noodles on a Saturday, and we were serving burgers on Monday. Uh, I remember when this all went down, and it was very fucking seamless. Yeah. And in, in the <laughs> glad, well, well, we're, we're seen from, full. Yeah, I'm glad everybody saw from, it. From That's what we were trying to pull off. From an outsider's perspective, it fucking looked, it was very fucking clean and just like, boom. And that doesn't happen in the restaurant world. No. You guys might have been through some shit back behind the scenes. No, no, listen, it's one of those things you don't plan for, right? We no, weren't, you can't. We, we weren't planning on it, and we were in the... It was coming into June, you know, where it was one of those now or nevers. It's such a good opportunity to get somewhere on the cheap, downtown Hartford, expand the brand in a different market with beer and wine. You know, it was turnkey, 95 percent, you know, and it was one of those things where we're building our 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 employee base, trying to. Uh, trying to split squads for the new five and dime Mm -hmm. but realizing as everyone who ever opens anything or tries to do something very large um it takes longer than you think yep it takes longer than you think so we're coming into the lean months of summer not a lot of burgers get bought no with the full squad how are we going to keep our employees at the hour level and at the rate of pay that they're used to and that We've been accustomed to, you know, we we promised them pretty much. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to lose anyone. So we split squads once before we squ- <laughs> split squads again so that everyone's able to – and give give Dom, Dominic, Dominique. Dominique. He, uh, he's the chef over at Goldberg's on Capitol mm-hmm. now, and he's someone that Tim was like – Do it with the dreads? Yep. Do it with the dreads. Love that guy. Yeah, he's he's always fucking super nice. And he's, he's he, along with that, you know, Jared in Newington, who's been running Newington, you know, these are guys. Basically just dropped the all of Newington on Jared. We were like, sorry, I got to go open this. And he's the one that used to work me. at D'Angelo's? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That dude's a monster. Both uh, of these two individuals, and we could sit here and name everyone on our place, but, like, everyone's got something in common, and it's that something you can't fucking teach. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, shit. I mean, I, I'm I'm only ha- like I'm so happy with the job and the opportunity Dominique has over there. I'm happy with the way Jared handled himself in Newington. Shit. They all stepped a, up. A small space got even smaller for <laughs> him yeah. through the hottest months of the year. You know, it's in both crews shit. That's awesome. As dude. as an owner and as a chef owner and as a just a person it's great to see. In the world of restaurant fucking dumpster fires and uh-huh. shit going wrong, like, it's an envious thing what went on. Like, yep. that, you guys, like, you know, other restaurant owners are going through shit. It's like they don't really have, like, stuff like that. Yep. You know, it's pretty, that's what makes it very well, cool Well, it's also me. the difference when you have kitchens that are, like, what you hear about restaurant kitchens. Everybody's wasted all night, comes in, hung over, they fight through it, they knuckle through it. I think... 95% of our staff doesn't even drink. Yeah. Nobody, guys... nobody does drugs. So it's kind of like, you know, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, you, we actually have a good time with each other. Yeah. It's, that it's... doesn't mean there's no stress. There's no. plenty of stress. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's your ability to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, you know, like, I, if they, the look, the kitchens that I see nowadays are very, like, polarized. Mm-hmm. You know, they could all make great food, but some of them are like your guys, where it's like a tight ship, everybody's cool with each other, and everybody's kind of like on the fucking 
straight and narrow. And then there's just some that are just like, motherfuckers are ratchet. going crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And they still get the job done. Hell yeah, yeah, they do. Trust me. I, I, I mean, I was younger. Like, I work in an That's industry. Shit. Dude, I work yeah. in an industry that treats those people. Yeah. And I have a lot of fucking chefs and, like, restaurant workers on my caseload. And I know, but I knew about that before, like, I had the job. It's, like, notorious for, like, you know, people in the fucking kitchen and be blowing coke all night. And it's always cool when I talk to somebody who, like, really locks their kitchen down and, like, knows exactly what's going on and not that stuff's not going on and they, they know it and they can trust their crew. The only job I ever got fired from was because of my shit, you know, shit on that, that, that level. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it was one of the most embarrassing parts of my life, you know, mm-hmm. and... and uh, and coming out of that, it's uh, I think it's a number one. I mean, you know, I just you can't function, you can't sustain the functionality of uh, of what's supposed to be, from my perspective, my life. Yeah, it, and there's there's no room for that. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. well, you got to figure like, <laughs> and, and being an employer too, like, it's kind of, like oh, there's it's there's kind of a li- it's liability. <laughs> yeah, it has everything. Yeah. You know, like I dudes mean, are. We had know. a dude falling asleep standing, standing doing prep a couple months ago. He was out the next day. Oh, but that's not to mention, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, you as an as an owner and whatever, doing what it takes to get a business up off the ground. You become social workers, which you really can't be. Yeah, you know, but like it, from the heart and from the pursuit, you, you, you feel bad, what, but you gotta protect your investment, so they gotta go. Yep. And I've yep. been I've been stung many times, not many times, but two major ones from past employees. You try to be everything to them, where you got to make just make the right decision for the company. Really. True. Yeah. yeah. And then like if you preface that, people don't usually like they understand. You know what I mean? And like I've seen that happen, and dudes like get it. Nobody really fights. Yep. No. But, but then even with on on capital with the. Like the posters and stuff that Meg just made for us, November fifth, we got the fundraiser coming up. Yeah, talk for, about uh, that. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, it's just another another benefit for uh, to raise money for Puerto Rico. We got a bunch of pork butts donated, charcoal donated. Um, so it's really at this point, it's just all donation going to a fund for Puerto Rico. I'm gonna try to bring as many people as I can. Yeah, and then just donate what you can. You'll get a plate of food. Yep. Also, you not only are you buying food and that money is going to it, but people can bring shit. Well, not to we. Can't well, they can. Them. We'll eat the food they bring. I don't no, know. I meant like we. When you said donate, I thought like you could like you guys are taking up like a money donations. Oh, okay, yeah, money okay. donations. So if, like if you're a family of five and, yeah. and you have. 15, whatever it is, yeah, you know, yeah. donate. I thought food. you had like yeah. a box of like for clothes and shit. I was like, <laughs> well, these dudes are really doing it. I well, love well, it. They're, um, one of the guys, a promoter that is helping me get some stuff out, a uh, dude named Victor. He's known it around Hartford pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he asked if, since he kind of like in an exchange, there's um, a fundraiser for, um, yeah, so uh, this guy Victor asked, um, you know, kind of an exchange for him doing a lot of like the promotion the flyer stuff he just asked since we're around the corner from uh burns latino school he asked if we could put a box in the window for mm-hmm. donations and stuff like that and i said that's not probably like, we're right in the neighborhood of course we can do that so anybody that's like wondering what we're talking about sunday november 5th pork for puerto rico uh it's going to be starting today we'll be taking cash donations to help feed people in puerto rico this will be leading up to a a day of pork sandwiches and platters with rice donated by guapo eats and a pork cooked by us uh gold burgers it's going to be a day to come by the shop and hang out and eat some food nothing crazy (laughs) just want to be just want to get people in to donate some money (laughs) hashtag money i've been in contact with a chef on the island and all the money raised will be going directly to him or his organization so he can continue feeding the people otherwise they can't get food please feel free to stop uh stop by whatever you're in the area and we'll see you sunday november 5th so yeah um 
I'll tell you what, there was not going to be any problems finding parking on Sunday. Yeah. So, no. So come on down. Yeah. And it's not really like it's that bad anyways. You guys got both sides of the street over there. And yeah, you can go up. It's wide open. What's that other There's street? No is that Frederick right there? That the There's corner? Lawrence. Russ. There's oh, Babcock. No. Babcock, yeah. Babcock is the one that Little right River's next on. to Little River. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. So if anybody knows, you know, like the whole block where, you know, Goldberger's on Capitol, Story and Soil, and uh, Little, River. Little River's on that building, go there. Uh, Sunday the 5th This will be coming on on Tuesday So that'll be a perfect amount of yeah. time Go there I'm going to uh, probably You know Make a couple posts about it And try to bring a couple people down there What are the hours? All day? I think yeah It's basically when the pork comes out On the first round We might do one just blast uh, In the box But it's basically when the pork comes out I'm saying Probably want it Might even get half of it done the night before Cool But I would say that I'm probably going to be there To open the doors 10 o'clock Okay and then as soon as the food's gone, we'll maybe hang out a little bit longer. If people want to drop off donations, anybody wants to do anything. Okay. Know. But we're taking donations all the way up until then at the store. And, well, I mean, if it if there's still a demand after, we'll we'll keep taking it. Okay. I will, uh... <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, and, I, and last I spoke to the chef out in Puerto Rico, he's also doing toy collections for orphans in Puerto Rico. So there's a lot of things that you don't even think about. I mean, think about Christmas everything. is coming up. Yeah. You know, what's going to happen like, there? It's going to I was so. just talking. Well, would, uh, I was either talking to somebody or I heard it on NPR. It's just like it, it's there's like not even water, like drinking potable water down yeah. there. And then yep. there was people working on the island that took off to go to Florida because yep. they were paying more. Yep. And that's just fucked up. Yep. That's oh, this, fucked this up. whole thing is so everything fucked up. Everything <laughs> is so like, you know, I think. Yeah, you got one person controlling everything. I think too, everybody at this uh, table is holding the same political outlook, you know what I mean? But, you know, like it's people like you guys that see past that and do your own thing, put your own hours on the line and your own money for something like that. Yeah. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of, like, as far as, far as like, the, the food community in Connecticut goes, uh, it's there's strong. a lot of people doing shit for them. And uh, it, every, I think it's everybody very, right now, especially with the uh, CT Loves PR right now, the yep. promotion that's going on all week. I love and, it because even motherfuckers that wouldn't do it are doing it because yep. everybody else is doing yep. it, you know what I mean? So, yep. like, you got your guys' hearts that are in it, and then you got people that are like, fuck, I better step up. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes doing the right things for the wrong reason isn't so bad. It's yeah. still the right thing. Yeah, it's still yeah. the right Excellent. thing. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, dude, that's going to be fun, man. Like, yeah. is there anything else we could look forward to? Is there a... You know what? I got a fucking idea. Live podcast from a table inside the restaurant while it's going on. I think the, that's the idea. Could we do that? I think we can do that. Absolutely. It's your call. Can we do that? Well, so you own the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I could I definitely so. do that. I yeah. think it's a good idea. I have dude, I would feel really bad if I just looked at my calendar and I have something to do on that day. Oh, I got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We got two barber shops on nope. the block. Nope. Daylight saving time right under it. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> so if uh, so, we're gonna gain an hour of sleep that day too. Yeah, that's all right. Beautiful. That works out. <laughs> Talk about a fucking overall great day. Yeah, and I mean, I think that the sixth we'll probably have industry night. It's usually the first Monday of you guys, every month. We you do, do it every month. We do the industry night with Little River. Yep. So we'll see. I mean, it's. Well, we got to see really where everything is, yeah. you know. But it's we're also opening up in a restaurant yeah. at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. So you, but the so thing that, is, like the whole weekend's gonna you, be nice and fun. You, well, you guys are like all or nothing. Like you guys are like <laughs> either at a hundred or you're sleeping. You know what I mean? So, you're, you're right. It's, I, it's like you got to save your energy when you need to go all at it. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? you guys are the kind of people that get shit done because there's, there's some people that's got to get done. You, there's people that sit on their laurels. You know what I mean? And then you see what happens when people like. You know, get too comfortable. Yeah. You know, always keep doing shit like that because, like, for me as a food writer and a just regular like foodie and somebody that's like trying to like you know bolster up some talk about his own community, like that shit's cool. Yep. Like that shit is what like shows heart and it's yeah. super cool. No, we appreciate. It. And there's I, a lot of people that have been buying. There's like, a lot little of little things that we've done. So Han it's always, was absolutely. Han did one. They got like a uh, like a cold like tofu plate that. If you come in on that day, they're throwing all the money to the CT Los PR. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's so good. It, yeah. make, it in a fucking such a fucking shit world. It makes you feel good to see something like that. Sometimes yeah. you need a lot of shit to make something better. Yeah, and it's yeah, it, it, it's shown a lot for a lot of people. People come of out of the woodwork during like disasters and shit like that, and you can really kind of see. 
who's got their fucking head in the game. Yep. Hell yeah. And man. also, like, all this good, you know, all this action by local restaurants and everything for the for the movement in Puerto Rico is, like, it's contagious. Yeah. It's contagious. And in the more the more people do stuff like this, the more people will think they have to do stuff like this. Yeah. And the more we'll get accomplished in and, the end. And it's, like, one of those things, like, that job is not going to be done for a long oh time. God. So, like, doing something, you know, every couple of weeks, every couple of months, like, ongoing. That's the thing. It's probably like, cool. This, this time, right now, is when people are still thinking about it. And we're even fading away already. Keep it a, it, so keep, they, like, keep it a conversation. Happens. Keep yep, it yep. a conversation yep. all the time. Yep. Keep it a conversation, and then people will, like, definitely come out. But um, there's got to be I – was, I was trying to look at my events before. There's a couple other things going on. I think Joey Bats is doing something with like a show or like some kind of thing going on. I can't remember. Somebody's doing sign. Yeah, I was just talking in this about area, it. and, and I he's just at, can't he's actually remember. bringing he's bringing some of his kids over that he does uh, art yeah. projects with. He's yep. he's doing. I got a little. We got a little blue block that needs to be filled in. So cool. He's gonna have his kids take some paint to it. Mm-hmm. So just get a burger in there for me. Yeah. After that, I don't give a shit. What you give me do. an abstract burger. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fucking, what else? Uh, so we covered a new restaurant. We covered Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, what else is going on with you, too? This is pretty, you, your, your lives are pretty much tied up right now with opening a new restaurant. Yeah. yeah Tim caught a fish last week. I Did. saw. I saw that. What yep. was that? A fa- false albacore? Yeah. False albacore? So, like, what is it? Like, a false albacore is like. Um, it's a mini tuna. It's a mini tuna, right? But it tastes like crap. And that's why they call them a false albacore, right? Yeah. And Chris and Wayman were like, you should have kept it. I love those fish. <laughs> Chris especially. He's like, I can't believe you didn't kill that thing. <laughs> and this Matt, guy. Matt I seems to disagree. I, I don't fuck with bluefish at all unless he makes bluefish. I, I love don't, eating bluefish. I, so I have a feeling he could do this albacore shit too. I'm the same way about bluefish and sea bass. Like, Somebody that I know can cook good food has to cook it. However, I've had uh, bluefish pate before. Yep, that's from Matt Jennings. Yeah, yep. yeah. I actually, I, that's funny. I just did the dinner with uh, yeah. Matt Jennings, and he had his bluefish pate. I was gonna come to that, but I had I fucking had a different sun going on that night. I can't remember what it was. Twenty one. Two hundred to take it. Oh yeah. Well, he hit me up. He was like, "Come down. This is your area of the woods." But I did something. I there was something going on that night. Well, they have the what do you call it coming up? Um. The Taste of the Nation thing? Yep. Mm-hmm. Who's, oh, in, yeah. who's involved in that? Probably Biss and that. I know. Right now, Tyler, Tyler Anderson, Anderson and Biss I hit him up. I said, yeah. I was like, yo, do you think you could like spare an hour or two right before come on the podcast? <laughs> and he's like, me and him are in a group checks with a couple other people. And I uh, and he was like, yeah, can I hit you up when I get back in the States? And I was like, oh, you're gone. And I looked. Motherfuckers in Dubai yeah. again. Yep. They're opening a fucking Toro over there. They yep. did, didn't they? Yeah, it's open yeah. now. And yeah. he, I, he does it like he. they just did one in... Uh, Bangkok. In Bangkok. So he'll go out there for a month or two, get the crew going, and then just well, take just, off. Me and Alicia just got to eat at Copa uh, two weeks ago. Last last day, last game of the Red Sox season. So we good. went to Copa for brunch. So good. Holy One of, one of the best shit. meals I ever had was there. I went there. For, uh, my friend Jimmy brought me there for my, uh, my 35th birthday or 36th. I can't remember. And fucking Jamie brought out every plate. And just, like, was telling us what it was, and, like, the servers are telling us what it was. And fucking, I think, you know when you go to make, like, an Instagram post and there's just too many things of food? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I literally had to take 36 pictures. <laughs> and I was like, you motherfucker, it was the nicest thing ever. I I will tell you, though, I've been fucking up. I haven't been to Little Donkey yet. I haven't been to Little Donkey. But I did go one day, and I didn't read the hours right, and they weren't open. It was like I was going to go and eat like on a Saturday morning, and they weren't open yet, so I haven't been, but I will go. Yeah, I want to get there. Toro. A lot of good, lot of good places in Boston right now. Dude, like... <laughs> went to this place, uh, Shepherd. I've heard Couple, of it. Holy shit. Heard we, of it. we went in late. Like, our everything went wrong between our check-in. Everything went wrong, so we were like 15 minutes, 20 minutes late, which uh-huh. put us there like 10 minutes before they closed. But they do a full bar menu. Mm-hmm. So the dude was like, honestly... Get whatever you want. I was like, all right. That's awesome. We'll take the menu then because yeah. that's it's a tight menu. And honestly, they sent everything out. Everything was perfect. Flavors were perfect. Seasoning was perfect. If you go back up, like, we, yeah, we all know, like, all the Bissonette restaurants and Matt Jennings at Townsman. Yeah. And, but if you go back up, you got to go to uh, Bambara. All right. My boy Dave Bazargan. 
he's the one that brought me to cook at the Beard House. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He used to do Dirty Habit in San Francisco. Sick fucking, like, rooftop restaurant, like, down in the financial district. Then they opened up another one in D.C. And then he, this is a hotel. Like, yeah. Bambara's a hotel. Well, it's a, I don't think the the hotel is called Bambara, but the restaurant in the bottom is of the hotel. Is it actually named Fireman? No. It's not Spanish? Like, Bombero? No. No. <laughs> it's like, what? Bombara. What is it, the... That movie? would be cool. <laughs> but uh, that dude is fucking on some other shit. You would yeah. love it. You would love it. And What's it's like... Again? Bombara. Bombara? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'll tag you in some pictures. Yeah. That shit, you... This dude makes this thing called... He pulls a lot of stuff from, like, Armenian, like, fucking style, like straight like original cooking and he does this thing and i'm probably fucking it up but he does this bread called chorig bread and i think if i'm correct i'm gonna have him on but uh i think if i'm correct in the dough is like totally mashed up like powdered cherry pit and they move it into the bread and it's one of those little like laced yeah. like little long mm-hmm. things that like folds over each other yo meg like fucking like when like she'll be like i need that motherfucking bread <laughs> and we went up there and she was like could you fucking could i get some of this to go like he brought out like a bunch of it next day she's in the fucking kitchen like <laughs> she's crushing like, dude, she's like she's like a crackhead with a stem but like she's got the chorg bread with a fucking butter knife and like that shit is just like some shit that i've never i've never had bread that good yeah. dude. and all his other dishes like it compute with that it's so good but there's a million places dude it's one of those things where like i know all the restaurants up there but then you ask me and there's so many i just can't come up with anything what's the other svu is that the other one that i've svu it's it's those letters then you got boston and then you got everything right outside of boston which is considered boston Mm -hmm. anyway but it Mm -hmm. isn't really necessary somerville's jamaica plain i went to a place called fat hen a couple months back that shit was banging uh, me and Meg just went to uh, Portland a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Portland, mm. all kinds of new shit. Go to five fifty five. Yes, when you go to Portland. I've heard uh, my coworker went there, and she doesn't even really eat like I do. And I saw that on her Instagram story, and I was like, kind of like proud. I was like, yeah. oh, that's cool. They had, they made the eat, me and Alicia went on a Saturday night. Uh, they the server comes up. She's like, oh, would you guys like to do tasting menus tonight? I was like, oh, it's it's Saturday. Not trying to do that to you guys. She's real picky. I got diverticulitis. She's like, no problem. I was like, yeah, you're saying that. I was like, I'd much rather it be cleared by the kitchen than you just telling me that. You know, just thinking like, yeah, not I'll, a problem at all. <laughs> not a problem at all. They Fucking killed it. I got a seven it. course. Leach did a five course. I love it. I love when shit goes down like uh, that. It was the best. It's that's where we go every time we go up to Portland now. And we went to a place called the Drifter's Wife. Oh, I've I've seen that, dude. Those people. It's the most it awesome. smallest, simplest operation. Yo, literally, the dude cooks in a fucking kitchen that's the size of that table if it was, like, a room. And it's at the end of the bar. It's awesome. And it's literally a 20-top, but it's a, it's a, it's a, a wine shop. So you walk through all the tables, and there's, like, glass with a door, and there's a fucking wine shop in the back, like, all this insane wine. And in the front, it's just, like, there's probably, like, six tables at most, and then, like, probably, like, eight seats at the bar. Dude, fucking kill. Dude, this, the dude that looked, that was cooking there looked like, he looked like an angry, just, like, rockabilly type. But you know he's probably, like, a sweetheart in real life. (laughs) But every time I looked over at him, he was like... Just cooking with his scowl just get, on. Just getting mashed. That's just the face. And the fucking food was just coming out, and it was simple. Yeah. But, like, the best way you could do it was so good. Like, one of my favorite dish was um this weird uh, apples that were cut up with hazelnuts over them with this weird uh, honey vinegar-like sauce. And I was just like, this is honey vinegar apple and fucking hazelnut, and it's probably the best fucking dish I've had all year. You know what I mean? And uh, I... I saw I followed this one called Portland Food Map and they um they mentioned Drifter's wife in this one picture and I was like, Tell that fucking tell that fucking angry sailor type in the kitchen these guy the guy down in Connecticut that loves him <laughs> and they wrote back, ha ha. So you know you gotta know that they told him that. Yeah. <laughs> then we went to a place called Cheval and it just it just happens, you know, it's, it happens every once in a while. 
And uh, we didn't have, it's one of those places where you look at the Instagram, you look at the website, and you're like, this shit's good. Gonna but kill it. While I was around there, I kept asking people, what's up with this place, Cheval? And they're like, oh, it's kind of new. I don't really know too much about it. And it seemed like it was fucking going to be, like, top tier. But, dude, like, Meg got so, <laughs> Meg got so fucking mad. They fu- she gets, uh, she loves muscles. I don't really fuck with muscles anymore because I know every once in a while you can get yourself a fart muscle and just uh, fucking shit I, your pants for the rest of the night. I, honestly, I haven't eaten muscles since I had them at a place in the center and I got a beard and I went in the bathroom and puked. Oh, and dude. All I, whenever I put a muscle close you're to my never mouth, gonna, I have that like. Yeah, you're never going to lose right that away. feeling. Yeah. She was like, fuck, I love muscles. Fucking let me get this. They gave you the toast points with it. And uh, it comes out. And you ever have muscles with, like, maybe they'll, like, put, like, chorizo or yeah. some kind of, like, savory, dried, yeah. oh, like, yeah. salty meat, so, some, like, little flecks here and there? Yeah. It comes out, and there's these huge cubes, huge cubes. It looked like somebody cut up a piece of Spam. <laughs> and they called it, um, it was just, a, it was ham. It was just ham, like canned ham. And don't get me wrong. Like, you, we know in, like, all these higher-end Hawaiian restaurants... Spam's a key ingredient. Spam is, like... It's a, it's a way of life in It's Hawaii. fucking banging, right? Yeah. Meg was so fucking mad. I almost had to tell her to keep her voice down. She's like, this <laughs> fucking cubed fucking hot dog in my muscles. And I'm like, dude, I'm dying. I'm dying. And then... Uh, I we, want, like, muscle hot dogs now. Yo, imagine that works. muscles on a hot dog. And then we got, uh, we got something. I got a pate. They had, like, a pate on the menu. And it was more like one of the loaf kinds, not like not yeah. like a spreadable. And they brought me out these two little pieces of fucking bread, right? Oh. I fucking the bill was two hundred dollars. They charged me two dollars for two more small pieces oh. of bread. And that's when I got mad. That's when I got mad. Wow. And Ben Beck was like, there it you happens. Go. She was like, There you go. Never going back. Yup. Never <laughs> going back. And I was See, like, All right. talking shit about me being mad about my muscles with hot dog. <laughs> then you get your two pieces of bread she, for two dollars. She was like, it literally tastes like hot dog water. This tastes like hot dog water. And I was like, I'm sorry. And but I'm somebody that enjoys hot dog water too. That dude, just doesn't sound appealing to me. Yo, you know what I got in my house? <laughs> Braised in hot dog water. Meg doing some design work for you know who Norpaco is? No. They make like the they make like pre made shit. Oh yeah. Like Italian food. Like yep. you can get like you can get like Prejou and yep. like shit like that. They're right in Newington or in Berlin or something. She went there, they had her asked her to make sign. Is it pre sliced in a pack? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the girl gives her um these things to come home with called pepper delights. And it's a stuffed pepper, a cherry pepper, provolone. Oh, I love that shit. And fucking prosciutto in it. Yeah. In, a, in a oil, right? Mm-hmm. And like I've had, I've gone through the years where I liked them or I didn't like them or every once in a while I'll get like a big one and I don't like really do well with the big yeah. ones. Yo, I found myself fucking eating them. I get up to go to work at 3.30 in the morning, okay? And I always come downstairs to fucking grab a drink, like a drink of water and make sure the coffee looks program the night before and i open up the fucking the the door and i'm just like fuck it dude it's fucking four in the morning i pull it out <laughs> pre-coffee stuffed pepper dude i'm just popping them in my mouth to the point where i looked at the fucking time and i was like i'm gonna be late like <laughs> i gotta get my shit eating. together <laughs> and then so i ate them all over the next couple of days and my boy was like, whatever you do, don't throw that oil out. Oh, no. Cook with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sitting in my fucking fridge. Yeah, yeah. And I'm getting ready to, like, fry up some chicken with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's awesome. Dude, yeah. it's so good. It's, re- <laughs> it's very good. But, yeah, like, we all have our things, you know. We all have our, like, little gross things yeah. that we'll always <laughs> like. You know what I mean? What's yours? What's my gross thing? The, yeah, Besides what, you, what I've already talked about? No, right? what's With your, my, like, guilty my, pleasure for when it comes to food that you think people would judge you for? I'm not guilty about much. But, uh, the, I mean, the only thing I ate today were two deep-fried hot dogs. You guys are I really eat, big I, into hot dogs. I eat a ridiculous Hell? amount of hot dogs. I know it's not good for me, <laughs> but I love them. But you, the thing is, like, you guys do a good hot dog. We do. We, do, we definitely do. Tim did one today that's getting ridiculous like feedback just and from people walking in off the street and getting it or seeing well, it on the internet. You can have a hot dog 
Right. But then you can have like a hot dog where you guys are like putting your spin on it. Like yeah. I've definitely had a hot dog at your guys' place with like crushed up salt and vinegar chips on it yeah. or something. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I don't like hot dogs. And I'm like, you I'm gonna get like another it. one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, like, hold on. You don't like hot dogs. You were in the hot dog feeding contest. <laughs> oh, well, that's the thing. Those were good. Like I'm not. Yeah. The, I'm not out there buying. Oh, yeah. Unless I go to Frankie's. You know Frankie? Yeah. Yeah, Waterbury area. Do you? No. Uh, All right, so there's one in Bristol. That's Bristol. why I grew up in Bristol. Frankie's and Blackie's. I always get the two confused. Yo, you know how many fucking Frankie's there are in Waterbury? There's like five. Are they all Frankie's? They're all the same. Frank? Okay, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's just like, um, dude, everything fried. Your clam platter, all yeah. the hot dogs, oh, yeah, hamburgers. Like it's like one, some place like that, like yeah. kind of like Duchess, yeah. but mm-hmm. a fucking level under. Yeah. And they like they take the, the hamburger or the hot dogs, they deep fry them. And then they put them on the griddle and roll them. They deep fry the hamburgers? No, the hot dogs. Oh, okay. And then, like, they put them on this long-ass fucking, like, buttered, like, cooked bun, and I get the chili dogs. Yeah. But I'm not saying, I I shouldn't even have said that, because I will go to motherfucking Capital Lunch and eat till I'm fucking puking. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm sorry. I said I don't like hot dogs, but I'm not that guy at, like, a picnic to get a hot dog first. I'm going to have, like, a burger. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yep. yeah, like, you guys do some sexy hot dogs, and I really appreciate it. We sell, we sell so many hot dogs in Hartford. That brings me to my next question. The menu at these two spots are very different. One's kind of geared towards... What I think is going on is you have Newington, you got all that crazy, take a fucking step out of the box kind of shit, and you kind of reined it back to your regular sort of stuff for Capital Lab. And is that to c- cater to the uh, the local lunch crowd? It's it's to cater to everyone, and it's a spatial thing. Really? We have one fry later and not a lot of room to do such things. Okay. So we we had to come in limited to see what we could do. Okay. And our specials board is turned into the specials board at Newington. You know, it's there's the Jamaican double downs over there. Hold um, on. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I need to let people know about that. <laughs> Why don't you tell them what a Jamaican... Do- yo, my boy from Stratford was like, yo, I'm driving up. I need that double down. <laughs> and he fucking came up here and he took a picture of it while he was eating in Newington and sent it to me. Like, yeah, that, it's a... Uh, so it, she, it's a it's a uh, it's a Jamaican beef patty from Scots, Scots. Yeah. from Scots. Yep. It's an actual Scots Jamaican beef patty, yep. and it's served between. Well, we get the the beef patty and then a grilled chicken burger inside, inside the beef the patty, patty with cheese, hot sauce, and ketchup. <sighs> again, and, again on paper doesn't look like much, but but when you bite into it, <laughs> you're like holy. F-. And then we, yeah. w- we went triple down though on Capital Ave oh, yeah. and went cocoa bread. Yeah. So melted cheese in the cocoa bread and then put the whole double down inside the cocoa bread. Dude, back in the day, like people like people that are listening right now are not going to know what Scott's is. Yeah. Okay. Back in the day when I was, you know, struggling with my, uh, with my, with my, with, with my face. habits, <laughs> I worked at Keeney Park. Yeah. Okay. On the golf course. I would literally, when no one was looking, take a golf cart. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Drive down the windy trail all the way out to Albany Ave. Yeah. And if I didn't stop at the ranch house. <laughs> uh, went, we're getting comparisons to the ranch house, too, from a lot of dudes in the neighborhood. Because I guess the ranch house is like the shit. Dude, the ran- I don't know. They probably still have all the same stuff. But I'll tell you, I ate that fucking kielbasa egg and cheese sandwich like every morning for a good two years. Yeah. And then sometimes I would get like really fucking brazen. And I would take it like a quarter mile down the road. And I'd go to Scott's. <laughs> Dude, I would park the motherfucking golf cart <laughs> in a sh- in a fucking spot, and they would always be laughing. They would, yeah. they would always be laughing. I'd get myself some fucking Irish moss. I'd get a yeah. fucking my shit though was like once I had a chicken patty one with that fucking spicy chicken in it. I kind of never got a beef patty again, yeah. and I ate beef patties for years. Yeah. So if anybody doesn't know, Scott's on that's that's not Main Street. That's Albany Ave. Albany, yeah. Albany Ave, and then they also have one. Oh, wait, you guys are talking about the one on Albany Ave. By the hospital. I'm talking about the one up near Keeney Park. That's Main Street all the way up. Yeah, there's two locations. Yeah, so 
it's a Jamaican beef patty with, and they do all their other shit, and yep. they do vegetarian shit too. I think yep. they got a veggie one too. Yep. Yep. And if you've never had a Jamaican beef patty, go oh, get the fuck out. Like, don't go get one from a bodega. <laughs> get them, get one there first. You need then... to go to Scotts because that's what, like, that's in my. I don't really know about like, like you're gonna get, you can get one on the island, yep. and that's probably will you know convey to what they're doing. Well, people say there. peppers is good. I haven't been to peppers. Where's Where's Peppers? Peppers is like just up the street, I think, on Albany. There was another place, but I never knew what it was. Yeah, I haven't been in, but I, I think it's right around there, or it's in East Hartford. It's one of the two. It might be East. I've seen the sign. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to get I think it's East Hartford then. I'm is it a bakery? It Pepper's Bakery? Yeah. Pepper's Bacon Bakery. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to look it up. Hmm. Yeah. If there's somebody who's doing a beef patty, I want to try it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Especially in Hartford. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's fucking... So the double down is you guys throw a fucking chicken burger inside the thing. Yep. And then, and then you guys did a couple times, like, weird empanadas. You had a cheeseburger empanada. Yep, double cheeseburger <laughs> empanada. Those. And you've been fucking around with some dessert ones, too, lately, right? Yeah, this time of the year, it's always apple pie empanadas. Oh, fuck. Tastes like the McDonald's apple pies. What the fuck was that thing you gave me that day? That, like, gooseberry fucking cheesecake? Yeah, it was... What was Probably that? just uh, no. What it was? It was uh, wine berry season. Wine berry, yeah. So a uh, oh, mini yeah. cheesecake yeah. with wine berry jam. So good, so good. Who yeah. the fuck? Like, you can't get that at Frankie's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that's that's, we, that's the whole thing. Like, you come into it, you get your you could get a hot dog with ketchup, mustard, and relish, and then something ridiculous to go along with it. Mm -hmm. You get your standard, or you could get your step up. By ridiculous, I mean like. Holy shit, man. That's coming out of that kitchen. And if you want yeah. no salt, you got to ask for it. Don't give a shit about salt in the food too much. No. It's Not many people use the salt on the tables, and there's a reason why. Because well, they don't yeah. need it. Oh, like, that's the thing. Like, I remember being a kid and just, like, putting salt on everything. And now I don't. But I'll still eat shit, salty man. food. Yep. But I don't think I've added salt to anything in the longest time. If I have to add salt to something, I'm basically not going back to yeah, the I'm pissed. I I'm think, pissed. I don't think that's why. Shit. I think that's why. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if I get, like, a good mac and cheese somewhere, I'm black pepper in it. Uh, I'm, like, And I mean, like, the kind of my mom would make. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? Like, black pepper all over yep. it. But Where you can I, see it through the, through the mac and cheese. generally don't use salt and pepper like that. Yep. You know? it's. I think it's, like... It's something that's in every restaurant, but I definitely think it's something that a lot of people don't use anymore. Yeah. Because food is so tasty and made correctly. There's, yep. probably, there's yeah. probably a couple research articles on, yeah, <laughs> on the usage why? of salt and pepper on the fucking American table. And, that's, and the other thing is, is, most restaurants don't have it on the table because most people, when they get their food put in front of them, grab the salt and salt it. And mm -hmm. then they're like, well, it's a little bit salty. Or they go home, the food's a little salty. Mm -hmm. Well, asshole. You salted it right away. Yeah. Give it a second. Try it and see what's going on. Trust the kitchen. Yeah. They, well, that's the thing. If I get something and I need to add salt onto it, like I'm just like, who's okay. like, who's cooking this? Because I'm know? already adding salt too late. Yeah. It's not getting into the flavor. It's just salting the outside. And the Might thing, as well salt my tongue before each bite. The thing right now, dude, like, like new studies show that like back in the '80s and like before that, people told you you had to watch your sodium intake, like. It, that's not the problem anymore. Nope. It's carbs. Well, the whole thing with MSG is a load of shit, too. Yeah. People want it. Yep. Like, you can know. cause cancer. Yo. Fuck you. They got it on the fucking bar at Han. They got a thing, and it yeah. says monosodium glutamate. <laughs> Good. <You> just <laughs> burr, put it all over everything. Yep. Makes it taste delicious. Well, we, we, yeah. had, we had, so when we first started doing the double downs, we put a picture of Scott's box, and then MSG's on the list. Mm-hmm. Somebody was like, I will never go to Goldberger's again. I didn't realize you had MSG. The next picture I put up on my Instagram was, was MSG. a bag of MSG. <laughs> you know what I've always liked <laughs> Fuck about you? you. And don't you, I don't know the dude, fucking You time. really like to like get somebody to say sign, and then you just unleash. And that's what I've always <laughs> loved about Tim. Dude. It's just like, you're worse than me, dude. You're a real motherfucker. <laughs> I could see you going to somebody's house for writing a bad Yelp review. Absolutely. I could totally see Absolutely. it. Or just catching them at the farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my wife have this business plan that we want to come up with, Will. Where I'll come to your house and call your kid an asshole for you. <laughs> Most of the time, you can't call your kid an asshole straight up. Yeah, like, you'll get in trouble. I'll show up, 
<laughs> you know, we'll, have, we'll take the kid in the backyard or something. Be like, you're a fucking asshole. Stop acting like an asshole. Your father didn't want to tell you. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he thinks you're an asshole. Your, father Your mom, <laughs> she thinks you're an asshole. Stop acting like an asshole. Your father doesn't have the heart to tell you you're an asshole. And he's a little embarrassed because you're his seed. <laughs> so he's embarrassed that he produced such an asshole. He doesn't want to call himself an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And it's like... I see these like textbook meltdowns for like people that own restaurants that do reply to people uh-huh. that give bad Google reviews and bad Yelp reviews. I'm not saying that's you. Yeah, no, I know. But you, I trust me. We've talked you, about. Some. Yeah, you will post a picture and just really push someone's buttons, yeah, and I yeah. fucking love it. I do. I fucking. But, love but I was it. even talking to Matt about this the other day. Since we opened Capital, I kind of had to pull back. I'm like, all right, now you we have got people. To. Yeah, yep, now you we got people to. coming totally in. Different crowd. Then it's like, all right, we're opening another place now. I'm like, hey, everybody, your dumb questions are awesome. Let's keep <laughs> answering this stupid <laughs> shit. If you do respond to shit, you know, it's a good hour that you're going through things you want to say and uh, typing yeah. and erasing. And guess what? And, erasing. and it's like, they're going to get it. And guess what? All you did was waste your time because they don't fucking matter. <laughs> no. no. Dude, there's like, you guys know what Next Door is? The mm-hmm. app Next Door? No. So it's like an app that's like Facebook for your your neighborhood. It'll oh. break down like it gives me just Elmwood so and the streets up. back there, right? The internet's going local. Yo, I'm straight up walking a lady's dog next week, two times a week. Get the and she's fuck gonna out. give me yo, you she's, got a job? Dude, up? she's like, I need a dog walker, da da da. And I walk my dog like five times a day. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, I, I could do this. I walk my dog. What kind of dog is it? And there's people like in the thread, like this old guy was like, I'm retired now and I'd really like to do something during the day. And then some little fucking like seven. 17 year old girls like I get out of school at this time and I could try to smoke some weed without my parents catching me and I, I walk ju- your I, dog yo I just mentioned I just I just write right in and I go don't give a geriatric or a child a job <laughs> that a man could be doing and the lady just emailed me personally right then it was just laughing dude I was like dude it was fucking hilarious and people will be like like, the, like it, they'll start like a thread and everybody will comment on it and it's like uh, recent break-ins in cars, and then this one guy's like, "What's up with the recent um, uh, break-ins in panhandling <laughs> going on in God, the if I... in the Elmwood section? It must be like drug addicts or whatever." Yo, I fucking that's when I turn into you. Yo, fucking paragraphs, paragraphs. I was like, "Yo, I schooled everybody." I was like, they, and then they were talking about like it's probably drug addicts breaking into our cars at night. No, motherfucker, it's high school kids. Because that's what the fuck I did yeah, in high school. And that's what <laughs> high school kids will do forever. And they're <laughs> talking about how they should be told. But now everybody's got the internet to talk about your it. Doors. So it seems like Yo. it never and, happened before. And so this one kid got caught. I guess he was in the paper. And they're talking like. High school kid? Yeah. And they're, okay. they're like, he they, he should totally go to prison. He, they should yes. do this, do that. He should get a felony offense. And I wrote like, you know. Fuck this kid for the rest of his life. I wrote funny. into it. I was like, you know what that would do, you know, like. You know, this poor kid is going to have something on his record, blah, 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 blah. And then I wrote, signed, a young guy that had a felony on his record that (laughs) made it to real life one day. You know what I mean? And, like, one of the dude's name is Gerson, so it leads me to believe he's 70. Yeah, absolutely. When that (laughs) name was being put out. (laughs) I'm just bickering. Even then it was 100 years old. It's a family name. It's new. Let's bring it back. (laughs) I'm just bickering with soccer moms and Gerson all day on there. It's fucking hilarious. He's like, it's Gerson. You're like, all right, dig in. (laughs) It's so funny. This one dude was like, I need a job. Uh, Where could I go to work? And, like, all these people are, like, like, giving him, like, a, like, Suggestions and he's like, no, don't want to do that. No, don't want to do that. And all these, you can see people getting mad. Like, well, fuck you. Like, yeah, eat a dick then. I don't know, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Next door, yours might be not too much because like you live in like a kind of rural area. Yeah, I'd, but you'd get all the people around your. And be like, shit. I killed 13 chipmunks today. They're not getting this next year. <laughs> Where do you live, Matt? Windsor. Oh, that's right. So you'd probably have a good amount of people in oh, yours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, dude. I gotta try it. it. It's just all I. It's it's amusement for my, me. My <laughs> wife would just use it to hit tag sales and stuff, though. That's why I got it. I yeah. wanted to know where the motherfucking tag sales are, because that's kind of like what it's geared for. Or but it'll be like, yo, who can come over and fucking like hammer this fucking gutter onto my house? Like <laughs> it's, it's pretty fucking hilarious. That's. I mean, that's. 
Uh, you, that, that, that's great. used right. It's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like the concept, but you get a bunch of fucking old hoity-toity fucking assholes from West Hartford talking in their own echo chamber, and you kind of get mad. But getting back to the responding to people on, yes. on the internet, please you know, tell me. You know, I think there's a difference between someone's position who, uh, you know, is you could be looked at as. The, the voice of the company versus someone who's just voicing in on something. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you see meltdowns all the time, like you say. And it's sort of like from our perspective, Tim and I, it's like it's easy to, to uh, commiserate with that. Like you know yeah. where the guy's coming from, but at the same time, you can see how it looks from the outside. It's easy to get sucked into it. It's so easy. It's so freaking easy. And it's, uh, but the opposite way of handling things which just happened recently, you know, not getting into any details, but there was an issue that at, at Goldberg's on Capitol, nothing, nothing bad or anything, just a concerned customer who's a big fan saw one thing that wasn't being, you know, maybe was uh, getting lost in the shuffle or something or could be imp- improved upon. And what did he do? He wrote me an email. Those go yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can actually and respond too. to we that. We actually have to. We we got to react to Yelps. We got to yeah. do stuff about him. Matt always responds. I don't have the. You, I don't have the business <laughs> info. For no, no. Even a, even I on Yelp. I'm like, this is the last one I'm ever. Re- I haven't responded since to Yelp. Yeah. So I I put something out there. I probably shouldn't have that. I wasn't too proud about. But at the time, I hit send. Yep. You know, and it's just fuck you. You so know, the dude they wrote the email. Yeah. Like, did you like? Come on in. We'll make it right kind of thing. Well, exactly. We, you know, I, I just reiterated my confidence in the crew at Goldberg's uh, about how the industry, this this job that we work, we our profession that we work, it's a constant tweaking and, and training, retraining. Just it's not an exact science, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that we high, I loved his response and I thanked him for it and that I will address the situation. And then earlier this week, I, I got back to him. That was at the end of last week. And I said, you know, after thinking about it, because co- going through the weekend, I'm like, all right, let me respond saying, I'll get back to you. Mm-hmm. But thank you. Got back to him and said, you know, thanks again. And in thinking about it, can I ask you to go back in? And I gave him a couple, you know, of course, I was, I was going to pick up a meal for him. Mm-hmm. But I said, in return, can you get back to me and let me know if, if what uh, Tim – Tim implemented, you know, was followed through on, and if there was any change. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, introduce yourself to the guys there. You know, I don't want this to be a secret shopper type thing. Although, you know, it, it was up to him, but he did. He went in with his girlfriend, reported back to me that everything was perfect as it, as it should. You know, he introduced himself to Don because he felt a little awkward, as one might, because yeah. Domin- He's Domin- in the presence of the yeah. dude that he yeah. thinks did on wrong, yeah. But just having confidence in the people and keeping everyone in the loop of communication, nothing's hidden. Do- uh, Dominique knew that he was going to be coming in this week. Mm-hmm. Um, he knew that I asked him to introduce himself, but he may not, mm-hmm. you know? Just be on the, you know, just be on the lookout. And I think the the end result to this, and, you know, there'll be other things down the road, but it's it's customers like those with feedback like that that we are so appreciative. Of. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What yeah. There's a, there's there's ways to go about it, and that's the thing. I I just felt like for a little while people were kind of almost taking like side shots at us when we're like standing there asking people things and they're not telling us, but mm-hmm. then going to Yelp or dropping a little like little backhanded suggestion in the box and it's like you want to take a shot at one of my employees I'll I come forget, right back at you I, I forget don't care. you guys have this suggestion yeah. by, or the napkin board thing. Yep. <laughs> and it's it, you know it's like you don't I, I just have I have a feeling that people think they can just get away with more than they should be allowed to and mm, you don't yeah, get no. to just be rude yeah it's the anonymity you know yeah this yep. guy sent me an email with his real name attached to it there you, you go know? You know, I'm, all, I'm always tr- I always want to hear everything from a customer, whether it sucks, whether it was good, whether they're not going to come back again. Well, what can we do? Mm-hmm. But it's just like, you know, just be a, a real person. Talk to people. Don't just hide behind everything that there is to hide behind from now. I've been on both sides of that coin. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I've been real cunty. 
Mm-hmm. Sure. And it was always kind of like warranted, but sometimes like 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 I'm like you. Like sometimes I go a little too far. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And then sometimes I'm straight up and then it'll pan out a situation like you're talking about where mm-hmm. it was handled the right way. Dude brought me back in, made it right, gave me a fucking some shit. And then I was like, then I turned around and boom, I write something fucking awesome about it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's how it should be. You know what I mean? It's just like I've had, and there's so many people that never respond. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just well, those like, are the ones you can't you can't help, and, yeah. and those are the ones you, f- you you stay awake up at night about. You know when business goes through its ups and ups and downs. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. yep. it's just like any other job. You know, you fucking. Put brakes on somebody's car. Somebody's gonna be like, "That dude did a fucking awesome job. Word Took fucking mouth. twenty minutes and then fucking he <laughs> fucking somebody I else crashed my car. He didn't do it. Right. My brakes don't work." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's, and it's funny because like originally, like Yelp reviews were geared for the food industry almost, and now it's you can get a fucking Yelp review on a doctor. Oh yeah, you, know I mean? you review towns. Yeah, you people. Can review- I saw a review for Simsbury. Yeah, it was like oh, re- beautiful town. Like get the fuck. Yeah, you well, I mean, we're like Simsbury, like, hey, thanks a lot. You know, we really tried to get the center, the walking area straightened out, and I'm glad you noticed that. Signed, Simsbury. Simsbury. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, like, you know, there's a lot of haters on Yelp. A lot of people in our industry hate Yelp just because of some of the few people who ruin it for other people. Mm-hmm. We're well received on Yelp. Yeah. I mean, there's as no, you should there, be. There's no room for hate. You know, yeah. it's uh, I think it's a it's a it's a powerful tool tool put in the hands of the Anyone with a you know couple a fingers really, mm-hmm. couple fingers and a bone, and okay, um, and it's been good to us really. Yeah, yeah. If anybody comes into the Newington area, if anybody comes into the state, Yelp basically points them our way for a break, mm-hmm. so. and it's really everyone else pointing our way. So we appreciate it. Oh yeah, yeah. thanks everybody. So guys, I think we should end on that note. We did an hour and a half. Did it feel like that? Nope. I want shoe now or something or hot hit Han hot pot man. Me and Meg are gonna go somewhere. I don't know where. Well, you know how that goes. <laughs> hey babe, you want to go eat somewhere? Right, Fucking. Let's, let's just get in the car. We'll decide when we're, we're on our way. Two we're hours on. later, you're punching a hole in the so wall. So goddamn hungry. <laughs> Fucking god shit. Serve the Taco Bell. Is there a mint in the center goddamn console or something? <laughs> when you drink- ate it. Gonna, you ate the mint. I'm gonna drink this water that's been under my fucking seat for a month. Pretty sure there's something <laughs> dripped into it somehow. <laughs> well, fuck, man. Thanks for coming, you guys. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. And thanks for all your support, man. Hey, yeah, anytime. I mean, yeah, you've always been behind us. Anytime. I know what's good and I know what's not worth. You got a worth. great voice and a better face. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I need a shave. You oh man. Nah, we got months before shaving. <laughs> I gotta get my barber to stop touching my beard. He's been trimming it every. Fucking time I go in. I fucking made an appointment the other day and went on the wrong day. And my barber, his doors were locked. He wasn't there. And I looked at my confirmation on my phone. It was like Tuesday the thirty first, not the twenty fourth. And I was like, "Well, I'm an idiot." Yep. <laughs> well, everybody, Tim and Matt from Gold Burgers, both locations. Thank you guys very much. Right, and uh, we will we'll see everybody at Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, everybody. November fifth. Five a dime canteen coming soon. Yes, let me know. Shout some people out. Who do you want to say hi to or let me plug on? Let you plug on. Uh, no plugs, really. I don't do shit, so no plugs necessarily. Just, uh, you know, the wife. Tell her hi. Hi, Alicia. Tell her you love her. Love you. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, I got to say Carmen, my wife. I love you, Carmen. You love but her. no one really knows who I am or anything, and I like it like that. So I know who like you that. are. I know. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Five and Dime will be opening. Do We don't have a tentative date, do we? It's a month. Okay. Talk, it's a, talk to me in a month. It's always a month. A fucking month. <laughs> Going for a CO next week. <laughs> All right. Cool. So people who know means the next step is soon. Pay attention Perfect. to Instagram. All right. We'll have everything going on soon. As soon as you see the Five and Dime Instagram, it's, it's opening. Very, very soon. All right, guys. Well, I'm hungry now, and I'm going to go eat. All right, man.